Hey everybody, this is Steve from Watson House Studios. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing a video right now on a tribute to Gary Rosington. And I'm gonna tell a few stories. I might actually cry. Um, sorry. It just makes me sad. Um, I'm gonna start this song here. And hopefully I don't get killed for this, playing this. Um, if you're like me, I, I'm 61 years old. Grew up in an age. I started playing music when I was 12. I started playing guitar. Got really interested and fell in love with music. And I, uh, by that time, some of my heroes that I really started listening to were already gone. Jimi Hendrix was my main one. I remember listening to him, trying to learn how to play Jimi Hendrix songs, but also um, trying to, uh, reading about him, just uh, trying to understand what his life was like, because there was nothing, you know, I couldn't go back and you wouldn't hear interviews from him anymore. And there's very, very few interviews of Jimi Hendrix, especially in 1972, 73. You couldn't find them, right? We had no internet back then. And we'd have Cream Magazine or Rolling Stone Magazine. I think that's all, our only access to those kind of things. And these rock stars were so much bigger than life. One of my other heroes at the time was Jim Croce. I started listening to Jim Croce. And um, there was a documentary on TV. I was, tw I was 12 in 1973, actually. Born in 61. And it was about, uh, it was on one of the major networks and it was about Jim Croce and it was about his, they were showing his wife and child and they were talking about his plane crash and his death. And I mean, those, these guys were idols to me and they were gone. And you didn't know, you know much about them. They were just bigger than life. So fast forward a little bit and in 1977, I, October 20th, 1977, the plane crash of Leonard Skinner. Another band I was really getting into, ironically, at the time. Played in a band, and one of our members in the band, our lead singer, who only was a lead singer for a couple of weeks, but was a really good guy, James Isham. He really was into Skinner and got us into it. We started playing some of their songs. We played Freebird. We played, you know, of course, Sweet Home Alabama. But I think they had just come out with Street Survivors, which is a great record, and That Smell was one of my favorite songs at the time. And then that plane crash happened. And so now I'm gonna jump forward and talk about something that happened a few years ago. Um, a friend of mine, I, I got lucky enough to play in a band and we got to tour. I played with a guy named Money Mark. Money Mark was part of the Beastie Boys. And we got to tour with the Beastie Boys. Mark's, Mark's band opened up for the Beastie Boys. And um, got to see the world, you know, and it was a great, amazing thing to play. Places like Madison Square Garden, uh, Los Angeles Forum playing places where the Beatles played in the Olympia in Paris. Anyway, on that tour, our tour manager was a guy named Steve Vidoris. Was, he turns out Steve Vidoris, I didn't even know at the time, had a brother, Robert Vidoris, who had actually had some success in the music business. And he, I didn't know that at the time, but Steve Vidoris was just a knowledge book of uh, stories. And I talked to him all the time. He's a very interesting guy. And he was had tour manager and managed John Denver, another person who died in a plane crash. And uh, he always had a, such an awe. He loved John Denver. So I just, Steve Vidoris was a person I wanted to keep stay friends with. I think it was harder in the day when there was not much internet, even then, 98 was when we met. Um, but I kept in touch with him, and Steve Vidoris went on to become Leonard Skinner's tour manager. And when they um, Leonard Skinner was on tour, we... Steve invited me to go see him. They were playing at the Greek here in Los Angeles. And of course, I wanted to go. I wanted to see Steve. I hadn't seen him in years, since 98 or 99 probably, because we played we played the first Coachella in 1999, and that's the last time I saw Steve that I remembered. Anyway, so we went to uh, went to the Greek. And it was a great show. Got to see Steve, and Steve took me backstage and got to meet the band. And I got to meet uh, Ricky Madlock, Medlock and Gary Rosington, and I was got a few minutes to sit there and talk to them. And within a minute, Gary asked me if I remember the plane crash. Of course, you know, I did. But he also asked me if I remember where I was at, and if I knew what happened or whatever. Just, I guess he was seeking a personal story, I don't know. But what I was able to tell him was, I remember hearing about it at my high school. We were in high school, and our student 
body president, a guy named Charlie Magellan, who himself was killed a couple years later, announced over the PA system that there had been an accident. In the pl a plane crash, Leonard Skinner was involved in a plane crash. And I believe at the time he knew already, or they knew, that Ronnie Van Zant had died and that maybe a couple other members at the time. I don't think we knew about, um, anyway. The, uh, and then he played Freebird. Played Freebird out of the school system. And I just remember being emotional and just like, again, it was one of the one of those, all our rocks and stars are all our legends. I know it's an exaggeration, but it felt that way to me. They were tragic. There was so much tragedy around rock and roll, at least in our lives. And it really impacted me. But I found myself here sitting there with Gary and Ricky and like, with one of the original members, one of the people that was on the plane crash and survived, saw his friends die, and I, I was able to tell my story, and you know I was holding back tears at the time, which I'm holding back tears right now, and I was so touched by his sincerity and his genuine appreciation for the story, and that he was he just seemed amazed by it. That this high school, you know, which is a pretty big high school, I think we had three thousand students in the school had this song playing over it while he was obviously in pain, suffering, and, you know, he just seemed really genuine and such a nice man in my few minutes I had with him. And so I just wanted to tell the story in honor of Gary and also in honor of Steve Adoris, who was a friend. And um, to Gary, rest in peace, man. I hope you enjoyed your life. I'm sorry you had to go through so much tragedy, but I'm very grateful for what you accomplished and what you did. And for those few moments I had with you, I'll always be grateful. So thank you. Peace, everybody.